now that we have VirtualBox installed, let's see how to create our first virtual machine. I'm pretty creating a Ubuntu VM and uh, if you see VirtualBox is clever enough as and when you type Ubuntu, it's already taken uh, the type as Linux and the version as Ubuntu and we will leave the folders default I'll go to this uh, this is where we select the memory that's needed for our system I'll give 2 gigabytes of memory I'll create uh, a new hard disk or a virtual hard disk as well. we locate the dynamic uh, space so what this means is uh, if we select fixed size so when the instance is created the entire volume uh, is occupied on the host disk whereas uh, if you are allocating or specifying dynamic allocation what would happen is uh, the space would only be consumed for the files which are written on the operating system so a dynamically allocated hard disk file will only use space on the physical hard disk as it fills up up to a maximum fixed size that has been allocated. Now, the size which has already been increased can not be shrinked back again. So, this is something that you have to be mindful about. But in every case, dynamic allocation is the best way forward. I would give the amount of this that I want to create at 20 GB. I'll click on create and that's it. So, when I click on start, uh, it would first try to see if there is anything on the desk so that it could boot from itself. If there is no operating system installed on the desk, what it would do is uh, ask us to provide the ISO. Uh, the way in which we could add the ISO is uh, you just go to the add symbol there and you click on the uh, ISO image that you want to add. Now I already have the image so I will be using this. This is the same file which we saw just now. I click on choose and I click on start. So now we would be starting the installation. Uh, the installation has already begun and uh, this might take some time for the entire process to finish. I'll take you to each and every step. So this is currently checking uh, the identity which can take uh, about a minute or so. Once the identity is checked, then it would uh, proceed with the installation. So it's copying the package list. Here I select the language in which I want the installation to be. I'll select English. Uh, the layout and the variant is the same, so I'll keep the same. The Ethernet card is being set up now, so it would be getting an IP between the range 10.0.2.15 slash 24, which means uh, about 255 IPs uh, are available for us to be selected. I'll say done. There's no proxy server that I would be adding, so I'll go to the next stage. Uh, we'll leave the mirrors as the same and go to the next stage and uh, i could say continue without updating so it would ask me if i want to use the entire hard disk i'll keep the thing as same i'll click on enter and uh, this is actually showing me the amount of volumes that would be created i again would keep it the same and i say continue so once I set continue, it will start the installation process. It's actually asking me for the name. I'll say Ubuntu. It's asking me for the name of the server. I'll give it as Ubuntu 1. I'll pick a name for the user. It's Ubuntu. I'll give a password. Make sure you're giving a strong password. Always a best practice. I click on done. Uh, do, I, do I have an advantage token? No. Do I want to install open search server? Yes. And uh, go to this and do the installation. Now there are multiple things which we could pre-install uh, with the installation, but I would just leave it as it is. So we have packages like AWS CLI, Kubernetes, Docker, which can be pre-installed uh, as in when the instance is booting up, but I'll select nothing so that the installation is fast enough. 
so as you see uh, the image is being extracted into the temp directory and into the mounts we could see the full logs here so this is what is actually happening in the background So this has been trying to download the updates uh, from the Linux uh, the Ubuntu mirrors. Uh, that's uh, in dot archive dot ubuntu dot com. Uh, once all the packages have been downloaded, it's now unpacking those packages and then it would be installing them. So if you would like to close this entire uh, verbos log, right? All we have to do is hit the down arrow. And we could uh, we could select this if if you again want to go back to the full logs, uh, we could go inside this. As as we see, this is actually installing the kernel, and this is the uh, actual logs of the installation. So Ubuntu is based on the Linux uh, operating system, so the kernel is pretty much the same. Uh, it's basically the components that are needed. Uh, for running the OS on top of that uh, we would have special packages and uh, things related to Ubuntu which would lie on top of the kernel I can go back so it's actually telling me that it's uh, installing the target devices so it's uh, now installing cloud init open server which we selected uh, when we were doing the setup process now that everything is created, right? Um, so let's uh, it's now downloading security updates, and this is how it actually looks like. Getting the details from Ubuntu, uh, the version is focal. It's trying to get the security updates there. We we'll just wait for the entire setup to complete. So as and when the setup completes this option that we see here cancel update and reboot right this would then change to reboot so we would uh, probably wait for that if it was So this is currently installing Python packages. Uh, Ubuntu version. This Ubuntu version comes with Python three. Python two is being deprecated all over the place. So uh, the obvious uh, default package for Python would be Python version three. Um, I'll again switch back to the old step. It's still there in uh, the security updates stage. We would uh, probably be getting the finishing screen in a minute or two. So as you see, uh, the entire thing is completely run and now we could select reboot now. I hit enter and this would actually reboot the virtual machine. Hey guys, if, if you're getting this error message uh, saying fail to unmount the CD-ROM, after the installation is completed, this is how you would fix it. You'll have to go to devices and then you'll have to go to optical devices. Uh, Click on choose or create a disk image. Uh, you would have to go to the optical drives and then choose the option. Here you would have to keep it as leave empty and hit enter. So this would start the boot process of the system. 
at this time when the server starts up it would take the it would put the opening system from the local disk which was created when we were configuring the virtual machine so this is how the boot would look like very soon we should be having a login prompt this is a ubuntu server image so we would not be having a graphical user interface but would be having a login prompt we patiently wait for the entire thing to finish and uh, log in to the server. So as we know, uh, the username that we had was Ubuntu and the password was So the username uh, is Ubuntu and I'll enter the password I created when I was creating the virtual machine. So I've logged into the virtual machine, I clear the screen, I'll go to the KH. If you guys see, we have a we have a 9 GB volume uh, on this. I do an LSPLK. This would show me the mounts uh, that are already there. So I have an 18 GB uh, SDA. Uh, I have a 20 GB disk. Uh, there is a partition with 18 GB and the LVM that's created, which is uh, right on top, is a 10 GB LVM. So this is how we get the system. I'll do I'll do check the release version of the operating system. So you would see this is an Ubuntu version 20.04.4. That's it for this video guys. I uh, thank you so much for watching. Please do like and share the video. Thank you.